1950, Italian physicist Enrico Fermi famously asked, where is everybody? He obviously wasn't the first to wonder, this question is as old as our existence. We look up to the sky every night and we see an ocean of stars and planets, but a universe 13.8 billion years old should be more full. Surely that's enough time for life and technologies to flourish. Look at ourselves. We and every living thing on this earth are products of a long line of life that first emerged on Earth 3.8 billion years ago. And we've come quite a long way in such a short time. In 1659, Dutch astronomer Christian Huygens drew this, the first sketch of Mars. Fast forward just 300 years and we go from this to this. Yet despite our speedy progress, we haven't discovered life or signals from alien civilizations, despite what the Discovery Channel might tell you. Now the difficulty in calculating the likelihood that alien life exists is that the universe is not a fixed place. Even seemingly eternal stars have an expiry date, much like us. The universe is also a vast expanse where there are more planets than all the words that have ever left the mouths of every human being that ever lived. And is growing at mind-boggling speeds. So as you can guess, many of our calculations are just educated estimations. But what do we have so far? This might make you hungry. This is the Drake Equation, first presented by astronomer Frank Drake, and is used to estimate how many detectable alien civilizations there are in our Milky Way galaxy. And this question is made up of several questions. We need to know the rate of star formation, which we'll call our star. F sub p is a fraction of those stars with planets, much like our own solar system. The number of these planets with environments suitable for life we'll call n sub e. F sub L signifies the fraction of these suitable planets where life actually appears, and the fraction of these life-bearing planets where intelligence emerges, we'll call it F sub I. Now the fraction of these planets with intelligent life where detectable signals of their existence are released shall be called F sub C. Finally, the length of time these civilizations remain detectable we'll call L. Keep in mind, we on Earth have only been blessing the universe with our radio signals for about a hundred years. You multiply all these estimations together and we finally arrive at N, the number of communicating civilizations in the Milky Way galaxy. Depending on how optimistic you're willing to be, estimates may vary between 12,000 and 1 million. Even at the lowest estimations, us humans are way more likely to be sharing the galaxy with other intelligent beings than my chances of getting a royal flush in poker. But we are looking, be it with a budget about as bleak as my student maintenance loan. The researchers working at SETI, the search for extraterrestrial intelligence, are scouring the galaxy for life, like whether there are microbes on Mars, or under the frozen oceans of Jupiter's moon Europa, or whether there are any radio signals from technologically advanced life. So far, no luck. But would it be lucky if we found extraterrestrial life? And is it wise to look? How would you feel if we found an intelligent alien species? Pretty interesting. It'd be great. Pretty exciting. It'd be pretty terrifying. It'd be a bit intimidating, I guess. Probably quite exciting. I think you'd be more scared. Did we put a target on our back when we sent out Voyager 1 and 2, unmanned spacecrafts containing a cosmic message in a bottle, both currently about 12.5 billion miles away from Earth? NASA attached to them a record holding information about life on Earth like music, greetings in 55 languages, messages, out of our solar system, into the universe, seeking only peace, and sounds of nature, pictures, and our location in the Milky Way galaxy, all coded in a way that an intelligent being of another time and place can decipher. And that's with the hope that in the probable distant future, they may stumble upon our message, read it, and then make contact. Who knows, they may be hostile and come to Earth to conquer it in a War of the Worlds type fashion, or they could be friendly like we'd hope humans would be if we were visitors. Whatever your opinion, the outcome would have profound effects on mankind. The fact that we simply sent that bottle out into the cosmic ocean just demonstrates our innate desire to explore and pioneer. The mystery of the universe is just too strong. If we were to find life, what would it be like? How special is life here? 
I highly doubt Hollywood's alien expectations would hold up. I expect it would be more exotic, <laughs> peculiar and eye-catching as life on Earth. Amongst the most abundant elements in the universe are helium, oxygen, hydrogen, carbon and nitrogen. Helium, which is chemically inactive, <coughs> has no part to play in the living processes. These four, however, are amongst the main ingredients for life on Earth. Coincidence? So we have speculated that there should be plenty of intelligent life to find, but why haven't we found it yet? Well, maybe we're looking in the wrong direction, or our perspective of the cosmos is all just a mirage, and all the fun happens within the mysterious dark matter. Which makes up about 25% of the universe. Or maybe we're looking at the wrong scale. Intelligence isn't necessarily the inevitable consequence of evolution. Just take bacteria or tardigrades as an example. These little water bears outnumber us a billion to one and we're here long before us and will likely be here long after us. Finding a home isn't hard for them since they've been found living in the blistering cauldron of volcanic lava to the nippy Antarctic environments that would almost immediately see the end to most species. They can even survive in the fierce vacuum of space and this all seems to be in the absence of intelligence. Or even we haven't discovered intelligent beings because they have destroyed themselves. As Professor Brian Cox stated, it is not possible to run a world that has the power to destroy itself and that needs global collaborative solutions to prevent that. With nuclear war a growing threat, are we headed down the same path? The search for life is a pretty arduous and expensive job. We built huge antennas around the world to pick up radio transmissions from space. But this method requires a lot of patience and time. Since radio waves are on the electromagnetic spectrum, they move at the speed of light. But as the speed of light is finite, any signals we receive from distant civilizations will be like the archaeology of the future. Their signal would take so long to reach us that it would be like learning about their past. If we were to send a message back in reply, who knows if anyone would still be there to receive it. Another way to look for life is to look for exoplanets, planets that are outside of our solar system, that are like Earth since you know for sure that life exists here. Ideally a planet the size of Earth in the Goldilocks zone, that is the orbit around a star where conditions for life are just right. Basically, where water is in its liquid form. But what's the big deal with water, I hear you ask? Back to the lab. This valuable substance won't only quench your thirst or get your shoes wet. It's also a very precious solvent, allowing life-giving biochemical reactions to occur. But why water in particular? Well, like we said before, hydrogen and oxygen, the two elements that make up water, are amongst the most abundant elements in the universe. Therefore, it wouldn't be crazy to assume that a different life form might also use water. Many more long nights at the telescope are needed before we can get definitive answers about whether these Earth-like planets may harbour life. Carl Sagan, who worked on NASA's imaging team, persuaded NASA to turn Voyager 1's space probe back towards Earth for one final image, in which he coined the pale blue dot. This image was taken from about 6 billion kilometres away. To put that into perspective, that's about 150,000 times the circumference of the Earth or about 52 times the height of every human being on Earth standing on top of one another. Our planet, with everything we know on it, this pale blue dot, a pixel suspended in a ray of sunlight, seems so minuscule among the vastness of space. But this shouldn't make you feel insignificant. It's simply an insight into how our Earth nurtures us from the sheer vastness of the universe. Whether or not there is life beyond us, we are pretty damn special, and if there's one thing that should fuel your imagination and give you an appreciation of the cosmos, is that we are it. We are star stuff.